Welcome back, folks. We're talking about interfaces and how they work with abstraction. Try to summarize the last couple of videos into a nice little ball. So one of the things that you'll notice, once you kind of get a sense that, OK, abstraction is detail removal, we've seen that. Generalization, we've seen that, is that you also have this idea of abstraction with an interface. And here's what ends up happening. You have a function, and you've written a function. And now, people are going to use your function. And so you have users of your function. And so now, the, the, what the function takes as input becomes your interface. It's how people might use you. It's your documentation for that. And now, what's interesting is in doing, writing your function, you might use other functions. And they might have the documentation for how to use them. So as you're doing this, you almost have these layering, these abstract layers where there's the stuff up here that might control drawing. And then the stuff down here that might control some mathematics, and stuff down here might control pixels, they have these layers. So each of these layers, each of the functions has an interface, which interface is how you interact with it, okay? What the input is, what the output is. And there are interfaces in your life. There's an interface for your car. So for example, can you drive a car that was built 80 years ago? Probably. Why? The interface to the car remained the same. There's a round wheel that when you turn to the right, Car moves to the right, turn to the left, move to the left. There are two pedals. The right pedal is the accelerator pedal. The left pedal usually stops, slows your car down. That's a common interface. Has your radio had the same thing? Actually, probably not. There's probably a million different ways to control your new digital radio because you have Sirius XM and CDs and your iPod. It, your radio has not maintained the same interface. So you probably, someone back then can't all of a sudden be given your radio and make it work. But someone back then probably could actually drive a car today. If you had a time travel man come back there, you could drive his car or her car, and they could drive your car, because the interface has been the same. Now, here's what's interesting. Below the abstraction, meaning how it actually worked, is not allowed to be peeked at by the person using the abstraction. So what it means is, when I borrow a car, if I rent a car, I shouldn't know, I shouldn't have to know how the car works. Is that car a combustion engine, an auto combustion engine? It is, is it a uh, hybrid? Is it a battery powered engine? Is it a compressed air? Is it uh, compressed natural gas? There are many different ways that cars actually have for propulsion, and you don't need to know that. All you need to know is that the interface is the same. There's a wheel and there's two pedals. In fact, the idea that the right pedal is called a gas pedal is actually an abstraction violation. You're not supposed to know that this is actually controlling gasoline under the hood. How it works under the hood is not supposed to be known to you. That was supposed to be hidden from you from your interface. So this is like, a, you know, I have people renting and borrowing electric cars, and they say, oh, push the gas pedal. And they're like, wait, it's not a gas pedal. It's electric, you know, more current for the electric engine pedal. But this is why that was not supposed to be allowed. More examples of interfaces. You want to have somebody put in floors in your house. Well, you're going to hire a contractor to do that. And you're going to say, I want the floors to be put in this house. And you agree on the cost. You might agree on the location, the color, and how, how long it'll take to do that. But how that contractor works is not something you, you're allowed to specify in, the, in there, which means the contractor could do all the work themselves. That contractor could hire subcontractors who themselves know about grouting and, and how to put how to the adhesive to put the flooring down and how to cut the wood into the right shapes for the edges and the weird shape of your thing. All that work is a detail that you're not allowed to know about. You're hiring a top contractor and how they get the work done, including that contractor, this is, not, this is a funny joke, but going to your neighbor's house, which happens to have the same floor plan, ripping up their wooden floor and putting it there. That's their deal. That's, you know, that, that was an illegal thing. They stole their floor. But guess what? You got a floor. Here's the price you pay, and it's exactly what you wanted. Hey, thank good job, contractor. It turns out the contractor borrowed from your neighbor, but you still got a floor. So the idea is how stuff gets done, you're not supposed to know about, need to know about, or need to worry about. That's a key piece of that. Okay? So there's a couple examples of hiring people, a couple examples of how code works in these layers, um, example of a car, all those things. And what's incredible is that every single year, things are built. We're building new and new apps, new and new functionality. And yet, if you keep the interface the same, you don't need to know that anything changed. So I have, um, if I have 
a new smartphone, and, it, and I'm used to the way that I interact by pinching and zooming and that kind of a thing, you could, 10 years from now, have an amazing smartphone operated by quantum physics or operated many different ways. So how it works inside the hood, I should need to know about, as long as the interface for using it is the same. That's, again, the power of keeping these interfaces. Whenever you have something you build, something gets get engineered, there is a way that you use it. That way you use it is an interface to it. As long as the interface is preserved, you can change the thing under the hood and improve it as cars have improved, as a new smartphone might improve, without needing to tell the users because the interface remains the same. Powerful stuff. So that's the summary as before we go to the last slide, which is abstraction is one of the big ideas of computing. It's the big idea in this course. It's how mankind, how did you, you imagine the most amazing engineering feats we've ever done, humanity's ever done? You think of massive sailing ships that are the size of small cities that can be on the waters for many months and, and do that. You imagine some of the bridges we've built, some of the skyscrapers we've built, the fact that we've gone to the moon. All of those engineering feats have been done by massive layers of abstraction where somebody's only in charge of their work. When you actually just channeling on going to the moon, if you ever watch the countdown, if you listen carefully, the person in mission control is saying, communication, and the communication person says, go. And that means all the details of communication that flight leader didn't need to know about. The person in charge of it said, yep, I've checked in all the 25 systems I need to check, and they're all good for the astronaut to be able to talk back and forth, even when they get out of the atmosphere, they're all go. That single thumbs up summarizes a ton of work that was all confirmed. Uh, life support, that means, you know, the case of cooling and oxygen and all that, go. So that person is going around getting goes from all the people. And if all of those are goes, we say launch and do the countdown. But only when you get goes from all those people. That's the idea of abstraction. All the detail of all of those sub-managers in charge of all those pieces, which is a ton of detail, I as flight control leader don't need to worry about. I get 10 goes from my 10 flight control sub-leaders, and we're ready to launch our flight. So, all that is the power of abstraction to be able to let me manage the details of launching to the moon without with only checking with my 10 people. And this is also how management works. A general talks to their sub people in terms of a big military operation. So all of that is in life and abstraction you're going to see now. You're going to start to now see, oh, I get it now. That's abstraction as you work forward in thinking about this course. Anyway, summary is abstraction's awesome. We'll see you at the next video. <laughs>